Hello friends, welcome to this discussion. We are going to look at projector motions. This is introductory physics. Our YouTube channel is Namakanda the Scientist Academy. Please make sure you subscribe. Now for projector motions, there's a difference between a projector motion and a projector. So we need to understand what a projector is and also we need to understand what a projector motion is. So when you talk about the projector, this refers to a body, an object, or a particle that can be the same be thrown in the air or would say projected. Now when it goes up there, there will be a force which will be acted upon it, and that is simply the force of gravity. So a force of gravity is what is acted upon this projectile, then it is truly a projectile. Now its movement where force or force of gravity is acted upon is what refers to a projectile motion. But this doesn't necessarily mean that there are no other forces acted on it, just that their effects are very minimal. But the main force acted upon is a force of gravity. So a projectile, projectile motion, is a type of motion where the force that an object experiences is known as the force of gravity. So that is what we have for a projectile motion. So where we have the force to be the force of um, gravity. So this particle that undergoes this type of motion is known as a projectile. Then the motion itself is known as projectile motion. All right, so that is what we have. Now the thing is, the path that a projectile follows, because once it goes up, then uh, force of gravity is acted upon it then it will eventually come down so the path that it takes from the time it starts off up to the time it to reach would say the ground or wherever it lands is known as the trajectory so the path it follows is simply known as the trajectory so a path that this same projector follows is simply known as the trajectory. So you need to know projector motion while well, saying that the only type of force acted upon or the type of force it experiences is known as the force of gravity. But I also mentioned the other forces, just that their effects are very minimal. That's who only consider the force of gravity. And from there, the path that this same projector follows is known as the trajectory okay so that is what we have now this movement of this same projectile is simply two-dimensional so we just now when you're looking at kinematics kinematics the uh the motion is one dimension if it is on the x-axis then it is on the x-axis if it is on the y-axis it is on the y-axis but for this one it's a, types of kind, it's a type of kinematics where you are looking at a particle moving in two dimensions. And what it is is that these two dimensions are the x direction or the x axis and the y axis. Now, the thing is, these two same dimensions are both linear, dim, uh, linear, linear motions where they are simultaneous and also they are independent. So we have for the x-axis where the particle moves along the x-axis and also where the particle moves along the y-axis. Remember that these two linear motions are simultaneous and also they are independent. Okay, so the movement of the particle in the x-direction is independent as when it is moving in the what? y-directions. Thus we need to look at what is involved in both the x-axis and the y-axis. 
okay so for that we're going to look at the horizontal motions and also the uh the vertical motion so let me draw this the cartesian plane where i'm going to look at the movements so we have the x-axis which is horizontal and the y-axis which is uh, vertical then we have that point this point is known as the point of projection so this is where the particle starts off so it will be simply projected going upwards at a certain angle from the horizontal so we can give an example of a ball and also it is simply move this same particle is moving at the same speed so this speed will be constant it will be the same throughout the motion so it is moving at a certain speed so uh, the angle there is an angle at which it is projected from the horizontal which we label as the angle of projection in this case it has been labeled as angle theta so from the point of projection it will start moving going up at a certain speed now what will happen is when it reach a certain point in the air we we'll now have um, the force of gravity to be acted upon it so it reaches a certain point where it can't exceed it can go any further gravity will start acting on it so it will experience uh, it will experience the force of gravity so once that happens it will start coming down so when gravity is acted upon it it will start coming down okay so as you can see there is movement on the x axis and also on the y axis we have horizontal movements and also vertical movement what has caused this disturbance in terms of how the particle was supposed to move is force of gravity and then the path it takes from where it started from up to where the motion has ended is known as uh, the trajectory so this path which is um, looks like a parabola is simply known as the trajectory there you have the speed at which it is moving at and also you have the angle at which it is projected that that is from the horizontal so we have the y-axis there and also the x-axis so we need to understand what is what kind of movements we have in the y-axis and also what kind of movements we have on the x x-axis so i'll label the point of projection as point o like that okay so this is what we have so being that these two movements the y-axis and the x-axis are independent so we need to look at them independent so now let us look at the horizontal motions of this same um, trajectory so that is a point of uh, projection there then angle is angle of uh, projection that is from the horizontal not from the vertical axis but from the horizontal okay so let's discuss the horizontal uh, movements look at the horizontal movements for this same um, trajectory or this uh, projector motion so i'm going to derive some equations here that will be very essential for you when it comes to answering of problems but i won't use calculus when driving this i'll use um, trigonometry now the first thing that you need to know is that the speed of this particle in the x direction is constant thus we get the acceleration to be zero so acceleration in the x axis is zero because this thing is moving up or upward so acceleration in the x axis is zero that's the first thing that you need to know then we not say speed is given as u plus 80 from the equation from the equations of motions so we have that speed is given as u plus 80. now this uh, speed we're going to look at is in the x direction so that is the x component then that u there will represent the initial speed in the x direction but the thing is these two are the same because in this direction it is constant now acceleration like what we've said it is zero so when it multiplies with time you're just going to get a zero so there we have that vx is just the same as ux okay now let us know what we get for this one so i'm going to uh, draw a triangle where i'm look at the speed 
but considering two components both the x and the y axis for the speed that the particle is moving at so i'm going to draw a triangle representing the same movements so it's like this okay so we have theta there which is um where they are, the hypotenuse represent the speed our hypotenuse will represent the speed at which the uh, the particle is projected at then that side will represent the vertical component of velocity and the horizontal component then there th this is uh, the right angle then this other one will be the angle of projection theta okay so u which is the speed at which the particle is projected at will represent the hypotenuse as you can see that's the longest side there then the y component of the speed will represent the opposite and uh, this one will represent the adjacent like that so as we know uh, we're going to use trigonometric functions to discuss this so I want to find the x component which is on the adjacent so we're going to use the trigonometric function we have Sokatoa first one representing sine and cos and lastly tan now let's look at adjacent I mean let's look at um, the x component so this x component will be connected together we're looking at the relation with uh, the speed, the initial speed at which the particle is projected at. So, and also we look at the relation with uh, the x component, and that is adjacent and hypotenuse. What gives us this is simply the cosine ratio. Cosine ratio. So, say cos of the angle of projection theta would be equal to the adjacent, which is the x component of velocity over the initial speed of. The particle now making this subject it will mean that we're going to have that the x component x component will be nothing but the initial speed of the particle to multiply with cos theta so this is one of um, the equation that you come across as you answer problems under projectile motions so i'm going to do this so that we emphasize on it very much so this is the x component of velocity that's why you calculate the velocity why you say the speed of the particle times cos of the angle of projection theta now since we're already here we can consider looking at um, the y component but we'll, we'll, we'll give more light we we'll shed more light to it when we look at the motions in the vertical axis so sine of this will be giving us the y component over the hypotenuse which is u in this case and upon making subject we get that this would be the speed of the particle times sine of the angle so this is what we have so i can uh, highlight this also so to say it is very important and you need to know this equation as well okay so we are still on the x-axis but for now this these are the two equations that you need they are very important now we can consider looking at displacement in the same horizontal axis as we are still looking at the horizontal movements of this particle so we can consider looking at displacement now from the equations of motions we have that displacement given as s is equal to ut plus half a t squared okay now s being that we're looking at it in the horizontal direction we can substitute this with x then where this you can put the horizontal component ux initial component which is the same as the final uh, bit, I mean horizontal component then we add but the thing is since acceleration in this 
direction is zero simply gives us a zero there so we get that x would equal to v subscript x and t but remember what you got for the horizontal component or velocity for the horizontal component we simply got uh, u cos theta then you multiply with t so this is what you get for the displacement that is in the x axis so you can arrange this as ut then end with cos of the angle theta so this is what we have i'm going to do this to it as well okay so that's what we get and uh, these are what we have in the x axis okay x is equal to ut cos theta this is very important we need to note that it is very important all right now we can move to the vertical components uh, the vertical movements of this some particle okay now one thing that you need to remember is that the particle is projected going upwards at a certain angle so initially the particle is moving upward now if I look at the acceleration going upward now the acceleration we have it is going up but we get a uh, gravity acceleration to gravity which is coming down so thus this one gives us negative of uh, uh, acceleration due to gravity so the vertical acceleration is negative of the gravitational acceleration so that's what we have like that Okay, now we move to looking at the component in the y-axis, that's the velocity, but remember that this goes to u, u plus 18. Why in this case look at the initial speed, that is in the y direction. Now uh, vy, sorry it's not vx but vy instead, let me wrap this this subscript of y would be equal to y there's this one which is the initial speed in the y direction i'll replace with the um the the formula that i already found when i drafted that that diagram representing the components which is u sine theta then i'll add with negative acceleration which is negative gt because of the direction so I'll get negative then multiply by gt so this is what we get for the vertical component. So this is how you calculate velocity of a particle in the vertical direction. So that's the velocity. Okay. So that's what you get. So you need to understand these equations. They are very important. You need to know all of them.